Hi, and welcome back to the Arc Orientation. In this video, we're gonna go over how to submit a Slurm script so you can have a job that's running on the cluster. The way that we submit jobs is through a Slurm script that will tell the cluster, this is how much time you're requesting, all the resources that you're requesting, and the code or the commands in order to fulfill that job that you want submitted. You cannot just run Python and then some script in this environment, you have to submit a job that has the commands to run Python once a reservation is made for you. So in a previous video, we have went over how to copy over an example. Um, but if you had your own script and you had your own code and Slurm script to execute, you just upload it just as I showed you before with the FTP and drag it over or use the upload. But if you copied over some examples or if you typed it out yourself, you just copy it over and edit the files inside the terminal. In this, in this example, we're gonna use the SSH client and I just copied over us, using this command, those files from the example of the super resolution example and I hit enter. So I went, when I'm in home, if I typed in ls.la, you see that there's a now a folder called super resolution. I'm now going to go into that folder. And then when I do an ls-la, you'll see that there's a couple of files, the pi file, data sets, and then there's also a Slurm script. Now, as I said, you cannot just run Python directly. You need to make a reservation. And the way we use it is by having this, the Slurm script will have all of the commands and all of the things that we want to give to our Slurm scheduler in order to make the reservation and then execute the code that we want. So let's go ahead and open up this script so we can see what's inside of it. I'm going to just use VI and I'm going to type in submit and then go inside of it. Inside this file, you'll notice that we started with the shebang. We have to have this at the beginning. So it's just letting the Slurm scheduler know that this is a script and then it's followed by some commands. Not all of these commands are necessary, but let's go over most of them line by line. Normally what you see here, or at least what I'm highlighting here is gonna be at the start of your script after the shebang. It's specifying what is gonna be a part of our res reservation. So it's gonna start out with an S batch and then we start with the time. This is how much time we're going to be requesting of our, of our requested time, as of our reservation. In this case, we're requesting 15 minutes. So our job is gonna be running for at most 15 minutes. And at the end, the scheduler, once the reservation has started, will terminate our job once this time has elapsed. So it's important for you to have this kind of balance where if your job takes as much time, like for example, if you know it's gonna take less than 15 minutes or about 15 minutes, go ahead and put a little bit extra time. So let's say you know your job is gonna take 13 minutes, go ahead and schedule a little bit more because once this time elapses, your job will be terminated even if it's in the middle of execution. There's the balance be between if you wanna have your job run for a long time, then you're not gonna get those resources probably immediately because you have to the scheduler has to wait until those resources become available to you. Or if you put too little time, then the scheduler may run their job and then terminate before your job ex uh, finishes executing. So make sure you put just enough time, maybe a little bit more, um, so your job can run. But remember, if you put too much, your job's gonna be sitting in the queue for a long time. Next, we have end task. This is how many tasks will be running. So if you typically are wanting to run one, you're gonna specify one. In this case, we're running one process, one task on one GPU. In this example, so we specify end task and do one. If we wanna have multiple CPU cores, in this case, we wanna have four cores. Basically, we're gonna have one node and then four cores that's allocated. So we're doing CPU per task, we're gonna have four. Next, we have how many GPUs we want. So we're gonna specify the GRES GPUs and we're gonna say one. If we wanted to have it two, we just change this one to a two. And it always has to look like this. Next, we have the output. This is, you're probably not gonna see the output that you want printed to screen. Um, we're gonna capture that to a file. So anything that your code is running, you, you wanna probably capture its output, cal capture its calculations to file. So we're gonna be outputting it to this file and then to a dot out file. And we're just putting this, this percent J and this represents the job number so we know which job actually had this output. If you don't have it, it's going to override this file every single time it's run. 
The next one is the job name. This is the job that you're giving. It's uh, the name that you're giving your job is just so you can track it in the scheduler, just like what we saw before with the SQ command. So in this example, as I mentioned, we're going to be running four cores, uh, four CPU cores, giving it one GPU. It's going to have one, pro uh, one task for this process, and it's going to be running for at most 15 minutes. If you wanted to, you'd be changing these numbers here. So if you wanted to increase the core count you to eight, you can just change this number to eight. If you want to run two GPUs, change this to two. None of the nodes currently have more than two GPUs, so I would limit it to one to two. If you need to use GPUs, do not go beyond two right now. Next, we have some other commands. These commands are for our um, scheduler. So once we get it, um, once we get our job running, so we're going to output the date. We're going to output some information on our job, and then we're going to be loading the modules. This is a Python, a PyTorch script. So we need to load Python, and then we need to load CUDA. So we're loading our modules here, just like as we saw in one of the earlier videos. If you wanted to list the modules that are actually loaded, just to verify, and this will be in the output, you can list them here. And then we're going to be telling, um, uh, mapping our GPUs and CPUs. So that's what we're doing here. Keep going. We're going to activate our PyTorch. So we're going to activate the GPU version of PyTorch, activate it here. So this is necessary. We're going to be using these commands. And then the biggest, probably the most important stuff that you're seeing is we're going to be running um, PyTorch for training. So that's why we're going to be doing to time it. We'll be executing this Python and our, our script and then giving it other parameters that you see down here. We continue. We're going to also run Python again, but now this script, giving it more parameters here. And then we're going to say that we're done once our script is done and then output all of this. So the point of this example is we're going to be upscaling some of these images and it's going to be timing the duration of that and giving that output. So this is basically what we need to have in terms of our Slurm script. This is going to be controlling what is actually executed. And that's why we're specifying all of these things to make a reservation. And then down below, we're loading our modules that you saw up here. This isn't necessary, but this this one here to, to do the module list isn't necessary, but it's good to know what modules are listed, maybe for um, those different versions. We activate PyTorch, and then we're executing our code via these commands that you see here. And then that's it. So that's a part of our Slurm script. So if I go ahead and exit here, and we see the other files there, now we're ready. The other files, the Python files on our data sets, now we'll be ready to actually submit the job. So in order to submit our job, now that we've verified that our Slurm script is good to go, we would be submitting our job using the sbatch command. So we type in sbatch space, and then the, the Slurm script that we want to submit. And it's in this case, it's the submit Slurm. And it's going to, to then take that Slurm script, submit it to the job scheduler for a reservation, and then we'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and press sbatch and run this command, hit, hit enter. We see that we got a job ID. And then so if we do that sq um, space, oops, space u, and then that who am I, hit enter. You'll see that I have a job that's running. It's that PyTorch job. Here's my account. Um, so I'm running this job. Here's the current time. And then this is the node that was dedicated, that's dedicated to running my job. So we're going to let this run. Uh, maybe I can do a, another command to see how it's time. Time is running. We see time is now increasing. So we are now um, waiting for this job to be done. Once it is done, we can check the output and, and in order to verify what has been actually executed inside this job scheduler. So I'm going to let this run and then we'll come back. So our job is now done. So we can see that we no longer have that job that's running there. So if I go into the folder, the super resolution folder that's in my directory and I type in ls-la, you can see this folder is now filled with a whole bunch of files that are outputted from um, the running of our, our job. So you see all these model uh, epochs. We can also see some output and outputted this PNG file. Uh, and we can now go into and see what's what was the output of this upscaled um, image uh, of this upscaled script. 
So that's basically it. That's how we would do to submit a job. And we just submitted a job. We just executed a job. And the last thing is let's check the output that we have here. You see this output file and that percent J that we had was based off of our job ID. So now let's look, let's open this file up. So let's see what the output was. Uh, in, in, in addition to the output that we see there, we have this output that's in our output file and we see some of the things that we specified in our Slurm script. We wanted the time, the date, we wanted to see what G, how many GPUs were assigned. We have the node that was running it. And this was all part of the Slurm script, the current modules that were loaded. We have some of the output that was there. So it's outputting each one of these and it's giving us the amount of loss that's, that's given per epoch. And then if we keep kept going, you see down here, that's all the way that we can go all the way up to 100%. But this is the output that we had from our file. And so if you had a script that was running something and was making some calculation, and it was printing those calculations to the to the console to the screen, you'd be able to capture this through the output file. So if I go ahead and hit Q or exit out. So now we have not only the file, the outputted um, image file, and some other of the epoch files, we also have that output so you can capture any of the input, any of the calculations that was actually made in that and displayed to the console in that output file. So that's how we would edit one of our Slurm scripts. We would see what is necessary in order to kick off some maybe Python scripts or JavaScript or whatever. We'd be having that specified at the inside of our, our Slurm script here. And then we would submit it by pressing that S batch that command that we saw there, and we can check the, uh, the status of our queue of our job with this SQ command that you see there.